Hi, we're going to talk about the three laws of thermodynamics. I really like thermodynamics. Energy, who doesn't like energy? Um, so here we have it, number one. Uh, the delta U equals W uh, plus Q. Delta U is just really showing energy as a universe. Um, so change of energy will always equal work plus heat. The vernacular on this uh, is really embodied in the conservation of energy and simply that energy cannot be created or destroyed. We only transfer energy. There's nothing that we can do to create energy out of nothing or to destroy energy. We just transfer, move energy. And when it's transferred, it's transferred in the form of either work. So my arm is moving, that's work. I'm transferring energy or heat. Um, and our bodies are producing heat. Cars produce heat because energy is being transferred. Um, now, where you'll see this embodied, especially in a chemistry class, is going to be delta H, is your enthalpy. Um, so conservation of energy, you live right here with the delta H. Remember, Q and delta H are synonymous. And by the way, look under my thermodynamics uh, playlist, you will see an entire discussion just on the first law of thermodynamics. Really good theory on the first law of thermodynamics. Um, in a nutshell, when we're talking about the first law, this is related to bond strength and intermolecular forces. Remember, I'm looking through the lens of chemistry. So you wanna know where you see this? Uh, first law, there it is, bond strength, intermolecular forces. Okay, so you can make that little note. Now, uh, second law of thermodynamics, also really like this. I fight this one in my life, everything going to disorder. Um, here's the technical definition, a spontaneous process, and we'll talk about that is one that increases the entropy of the universe. And it sounds like a lot of gobbledygook, doesn't it? I need some low voice. Increases the entropy of the universe. Um, so spontaneous. Um, I have an entire video just talking about this, if you need to go watch that under the thermodynamic playlist. In a nutshell, is any process that moves naturally toward equilibrium. Um, and spontaneous process is once you start it, it will continue on its own. Um, now, this word entropy, I have a whole video just on entropy. You really, really need to watch this to fully understand the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy is a measure of disorder. <laughs> we could measure dif different people's lives to look at the uh, amount of disorder that they have. Um, so this is saying um, anything naturally um, that moves toward equilibrium is going to increase the disorder of the entire universe. Now vernacular, really what does this mean? Because I know that seems really lofty. Here's what it means. And I've definitely dialed this down and made it simplistic, but it will help you as you're looking at your chemical reactions and determining entropy. Disorder, a measure. How do you measure disorder? Well, I'll talk to you about that in the video just for entropy. Here it is. Everything naturally goes to disorder. And you and I can relate to this. You let anything sit, it naturally will fall apart. You don't have to put any energy into things falling apart. And metaphorically in life too, if you don't pay attention to something, don't worry, it'll fall apart in your life. Um, the house naturally gets dirty. <laughs> you don't have to put a lot of energy into it. Um, any energy into it and it will get, the dust falls and things break. Um, not that I'm salty about this at all. Um, so everything naturally goes to disorder. So where this is embodied, delta S. Delta S is our sign for entropy. So this is all talking about disorder. So this is talking about um, the heat, uh, the work, uh, and for chemistry, delta H here, we're talking about disorder, a measure of disorder. So that's your delta S, S. And where you're going to see this in chemistry, it's related to the state of a substance, so the phase, solid, liquid, gas, and the number of particles. That is huge. Number of particles is huge because entropy, measuring entropy, is really how many possible ways these molecules can hit each other, how they can interact. Okay, third law, here we go. Third law, thermodynamics. At absolute zero, there's no entropy. There's no disorder. Um, so just a reminder, absolute, absolute zero, this is when uh, Kelvin is zero, so the coldest temperature possible. Um, or uh, remember that's negative 273.15 degrees C. So this is related to temperature. This is related to temperature. Um, what's cool about uh, the third law of thermodynamics, here's the idea. Even in solids, um, solids um, you're going to have atoms that are in a fixed position. That's what makes a solid. Um, like this is a solid and all those atoms are in a fixed position. But the atoms themselves still vibrate like this. And at absolute zero, stop. There's no movement. There's no disorder. Um, let's see here. Now, here's the beauty uh, tying this all together. It comes together in Gibbs free energy. 
Gibbs free energy, delta G, let me write that down really quick. Gibbs free energy, I'll put it right here, delta G equals delta H, what? First law, minus T, ooh, third law, times delta S, second law. Um, so this embodies, that's what we love about Gibbs free energy. It takes in all three aspects of energy, the temperature, the heat, work, we'll just say heat, delta H, and the entropy. Pretty neat. So there you have a, a great overview of the three laws of thermodynamics. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.